In this video, I'm going to show you my favorite blitz beater out of the trips tight end formation to be able to beat every meta blitz in the game. 4-3 even 6-1, 3-3-5 wide, 2-4-5 odd, any blitz that sends 5 or more, even blitzes that don't send 5 or more, even max coverage defenses this play will work well against. But I find that this works best if my opponent is trying to send the goons. They're trying to blitz everybody, and they're basically trying to cover with five or six people uh, in coverage. This is a great concept for uh, that type of player. And so this comes to us out of the trips tied in. And if you are watching this video and you've not picked up my Patreon membership, I'd really encourage you to consider doing that. It's only $10 a month, and it gets you access to all of my Madden 22 offensive and defensive eBooks, all of our weekly update videos where we basically do a deep dive on different types of concepts or different types of things in the game as the game evolves and shifts you know, year uh, over the course of the year. We do those every week. All of our eBooks get updated. You get access to all that. So if you want to sign up for that, our Patreon is only $10 a month. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out. Uh, but let's take a look at this concept out of Trips Tight End. We're talking today about PA Shot Post. And really, this is a play, I have to say, that I have kind of had a love-hate relationship with this year. And the reason why is because I'm honestly not really that great at throwing wheel routes. That is until I kind of figured out a better way to catch them, which we're going to talk about in this video, from a trips style of set as opposed to a compression style of a set. And it's actually significantly better. And the main reason why is because of the fact that the defense really can't, uh, they're, they're, they really can't stop these routes because of where they're going to be at on the field. Okay. So without further ado, let's talk about PA shot post and uh, defensively. Um, we're going to have a couple key plays. I'm actually going to take cover four out and put cover two back in because most people aren't going to blitz out of cover four. Okay. So let's say that you get your just standard, you know, double flat Mike blitz three meta, and they're going to use her kind of right in here. Very popular. So they got two hard flats on the outsides, and then they're going to use her in the middle of the field. What the way I like to run this concept is, is we're going to out route our um, number uh, our number one receiver in the trips, Mike Evans. Now, with Scotty Miller, you can do a lot of different things um, with with him. You and again, you can, again kind of kind of honestly up to you uh, what you want to do, how you want to run this, what routes you want to put on the field. I personally like to motion Scotty Miller to the to the right side of the formation. And the main reason is because it's going to, I mean, a couple different reasons. I'm going to show you two setups that you can use. So if we wanted to leave Scotty Miller over there, then what we would want to do is we would want to flat our tight end and wheel our running back. And then we would have Scotty Miller and we could either leave him on the crosser. You could put him on an in route. You could put him on a streak. You could put him on a curl even. I would not suggest putting him on a curl. You could put him on a slant. Just anything really that's going to kind of suck inside. Because what that does if we leave him on like a slant, for example, is it's going to really mess with the user. So I'll typically put my tight end on an out, motion him out if I'm going to if I'm gonna keep it like this. And then we'll do something like this right here. This is a real simple um, blitz beater. And basically... Wherever their user goes, if he goes to the right or the left, you're thrown to the other side. So if he goes to the to the you know the running back, then I'm gonna throw the wheel to uh, to Chris Godwin. And if he goes to uh, the tight end side, or if he's gonna go to Godwin side, then I'll throw the other one. So let me just show you what's happening here from this perspective. So this is this is your clear out route, and I'm just gonna zoom out. But what you'll see with this is he's gonna pull the zone. And then really what this does a good job of is he kind of turns some of those like curl flat zones, some of those vertical hooks, hook curl zones. He'll turn those zones inside and it leaves this nice little pocket right here where we can throw this wheel, as you can see. So I could easily have low balled that. And then over here, because we motioned this guy out, this is basically bunch. So we've got this flat, um, as you can see. And then notice that we can throw this wheel into this area of the field. 
The other quick thing that I want to point out is vertical hooks will cover to the numbers. They won't cover typically outside of the numbers. So you'll see that this route cuts right outside the numbers. So right outside of the yellow zones like hook curls, vert hooks, all that stuff. And then over here, same thing. You're going to see he's going to cut outside the numbers. And so ideally you want to run this with your trips to the wide side of the field. At least that's my personal uh, recommendation. So let's show you the blitz again. So again, I'm going to do hard flats and then we'll just make a quick read here. Um, again, if you whatever you want to do with this guy is fine um another thing that you might do is if you wanted to do it like this you could put him on the flat put gronkowski on the in route basically wherever you put the in route is more than likely where you're going to throw the ball because the user um is going to get sucked in by the in any yellows are going to get sucked in so that's just something to kind of know but anyways you could motion this guy over like this and you'll see here that it's still the same thing. Now, the key with these wheels is you want to inside pass lead them, and then you want to aggressive catch the wheels. It's very important that you aggressive catch these wheel routes. Um, if you possession catch them, they will sometimes do weird things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the slot corner on a left side on a vertical hook. And I want you to see what happens. So we're going to keep it over here now. So that the very na most natural step for someone that's sitting five um, is they're going to hook vert hook their slot and then they're going to use the other wheel. So you see the guy's kind of teeing me up here on the right to go use that wheel. Watch the vertical hook. He's going to get really sucked inside and I can throw this to the outside just like that. Now, let me show you something else. So let's say, you know, let's say that they're going to blitz like this and this is probably the best coverage they're going to get. So, you know, let's say they blitz like this. For example, this guy's in a deep half. They've got the hard flat here for the underneath. They got the shaded down vert hook. And then over here, you know, they're kind of doing, you know, they can just do this. That's fine. And then this guy is going to go guard the wheel on the right. Okay. That's, that's probably, this is probably the best coverage that they're going to be able to have. Um, this is another thing that I like to do. So when we suck in this player, or even like I said, just simple slant, something really simple. It doesn't have to... It could be the in route. It could be the slant. I actually like the slant probably the best just because of where it's going to go um, and just because of how quick it's going to come underneath it. But what you should see here is the shaded down vert hook should go with the slant just like that. And then it leaves that whole that big void um, to be able to be thrown over the top of that. Now, if you want this to be even better, what you can do um, with this is you can motion and we'll get into man coverage here in just a second. But let's say, because again, the cover two blitz is the best for trying to stop this, right? So let's say that they, you know, let's say that you go with this setup right here. Um, just like this, real simple. Okay, watch this vertical hook. You can pass like this to the outside. Once you notice that it's a vert hook, it's not a purple just throw it to the outside. You, you just don't want to throw an inside pass lead on this. You want to throw an outside pass lead on this. Now, let's say that you're, um, you know, let's let's say that they're sending for, um, an extra player because they're trying to get pressure. So this is to imitate like a 4-3 even type of situation. So let's just put this guy here. And, you know, again, just, just trying to blitz. Like a blitz. He's going to be like in, in here, right? Um, you know, if it was 4-3 even, he'd probably be like right in here, okay? So anyways, just to imitate them sending that many people, okay? Now it's even easier. So you've got that purple, or um, I'm sorry, not the purple, but the um, you've got the out route there on the left to pull the zones. And then what I would do, since this guy's already at inside, he's not outside, he's not at risk, you could easily streak this guy um, just as a clear out or crosser um, or whatever, I would honestly just flat him and bring him across because it's going to push the user to go right at the snap of the ball. And then we can just pass like that inside and you want to aggressive catch the ball. Very, very important. Now let's say that they bluff you in this concept. Um, I'm going to go over man blitzes in just a second, but let's say they bluff blitz you in this and they go with like a Mabel um, concept. Now I'm going to use uh, nickel to kind of imitate this because this is more of something you're going to find out of four three even six one so they're going to base line you know and do this number on you and then this guy's going to be their user and then try to give a best example i can you're going to get purple 
you're gonna get purple, and then there's no vertical hooks. So you get something like this. Very common. What you need to do is you need to trust your concept. Um, that's the biggest key. So you have to trust your concept a little bit here, but wherever he goes, and really what I wanna key in on is this right here. Once he cuts up field, aggressive catch the ball, it's wide open. There's not a zone in this game that will shoot right to where you're gonna throw that ball. Um, it's just, it just, it literally doesn't exist. There's no zone in the game that will guard where you're going to throw that ball at that point. And that's, what's really important. Um, if you try to low ball it or whatever, um, and it's in its zone, that can be potentially problematic. So I'm going to show you a 10 yard curl flat, which is honestly, in my opinion, probably the best chance that they have, um, at just being able to get out there based off what they're going to try to do because the vertical hooks are way too far inside, right? So they're not going to vert hook. You're going to get a curl flat or seam flat or something of that nature. So anyways, you're standing right here like this. Their users here, obviously they're, they're fake blitzing. So you're going to have just a little bit longer than you normally would. You come around motion. Watch how this um, 10 yard curl flat is going to defend me. See, he drops out, but you're just pass leading it up through it. And as you can see, it's gonna be a real easy, easy uh, catch. Now, let's talk a little bit um, about the the play concept. So let's say that they're just they're just running right after circle, okay? And we'll talk about man in just a second, but let's just say they're running, you know, they're just running every play uh, right after that circle receiver, okay? And then maybe they're doing that, and maybe they're dropping this guy over the middle. Obviously, if they run out of the middle of the field, you can throw your uh, route to your tight end. So I don't want to not say that. You can throw your route to the tight end. Um, but the other thing that you can do is come back over here because, again, the same basic thing. Low ball. Now, right there, that plays it again. And that's why I'm saying the 10-yard curl flats probably play them uh, the best out of any zone in the game. But, and just to save us a little bit of time, we're just going to go with this side concept. But I want you to see... Um, I just want you to see how you can still throw the running back route because, again, you have to kind of trust your route, right? But anyway, just wait on it, pass lead it right in there, and you see I can cut it off. Now, again, it's a little bit of a nuance because it is a um, – I mean, it, it, it's it's not bad. Uh, it's actually – like I said, it's probably the best zone in the game for defending this. Obviously, if they cross man it, it's a little different. But one other last thing that I want to show you real quick against this – Obviously, the whole middle of the field is wide open, so you can throw your tight end. I'm not, uh, I don't want to like, you know, not say that because you do need to be looking to that. If you have time, your tight end is going to be open. But the other thing that I want to show here is right here, you can still cut that off right there. Even though he's showing that he's in there, you can low ball it inside and aggressive catch it and cut it off so that it's not a problem, okay? So that's how I deal with that. Now, the next thing that I want to go over or the last piece of this is man coverage, okay? So what about man coverage? So let's say that we get a, a, a heavy blitz and it's a man pressure. Um, obviously, if they're sitting six, um, they're not going to have anybody that's guarding the, the, the running back. If they're not sitting six, they're sitting five, um, then, then, then it's a little different. So again, we're watching the user, but... Really, typically, he's going to go to the running back. So you're going to aggressive catch that. You have to aggressive catch it. If you aggressive catch it, it doesn't matter what they do um, in terms of what they can do over here. Now, um, that doesn't mean they can't do anything. And I'm going to show you a couple of popular adjustments. Um, one of those is we're going to man mills up on circle. And let's drop this guy in a purple. Okay. So this is something that, you know, someone that's really adjusting and you're abusing this concept, something that they might consider doing would be something like this right so what you're going to do same basic thing low ball aggressive catch it and trust the you've got to trust the concept worst thing that can happen in my in my experience has been they'll knock it down they'll hardly ever intercept this so again purple um and then and then um uh, i mean it's not going to matter because you're going to still have main coverage so let's just let's just purple the safety very common adjustment and then you're gonna motion Miller. So now the running back's un unguarded, but that's not a big deal. And then you have this purple and you see that, okay? Now, another thing you can do um, with this is again, the wheel to the, to, the, to the left is slower developing 
than the wheel to the right, okay? So you want to kind of look both ways and kind of get a, a feel first because you're going to look, you're going to see the whole field here and then throw, okay? So you want to try to kind of see it a little bit beforehand. So if they're man blitzing you, 90% of the time, just throw the ball to the running back. If they're going to man blitz you 90% of the time, just throw the ball to the running back. Now, I'm going to give you an example here where that might not be helpful. So what we're going to do is we're going to man this guy up on the running back, this guy up on the tight end, okay? Just a little bit of a snapshot. And then, and then you know, again, don't worry too much about the pressure. But majority of the time, the running back is going to be your dude um, on this concept. And you'll see here that even when they have the running back manned up in a decent leverage point, you're just going to low ball, cut it off, and boom, okay? Please, 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 aggressive catch this ball. If you aggressive catch the ball, it's so much better than if you don't. Now, back to the original foundational thing where we do something like this. Why would this be helpful? It's very helpful against man pressure because you get this nice balance uh, of your defense. You see, the worst that can happen is that if you have an ability on the running back, like backfield master, it's much, much, much more open. Okay. Now, the, the best coverage that I have seen for this is two purples um, and man okay in some some form of fashion that's the best coverage that i've seen now obviously they're not going to be able to blitz you obviously the running or the tight end is going to be wide open on the middle of the field but let's take a look at these wheels again pass lead inside click on and aggressive catch it you don't have to low ball it every single time if you feel like you don't have like if if it looks more open to not low ball it meaning if the defender from the zone is coming in especially in this scenario if the defender that's on the zone is coming from the inside it doesn't make sense to low ball the route because you're going to low ball it right into the lane that the defender is running into right so what you want to do is when he cuts up field inside pass lead, click on and, and make an aggressive catch I really recommend deep out elite for that. If you uh, on that player, that player pretty much it, it makes a lot of sense to have deep out elite on him. Now, one last thing here with this is when I was talking about how if I do an in route to triangle, a lot of times the purple will suck inside. And I'll show that real quick. So here's your purple. Watch, he's gonna suck inside for just a second. And then you can throw that. Now again, I'm doing a, I'm doing a poor job of, um, of of clicking on and catching it, and that's why you want to practice these routes. But that's another little thing that you can kind of mix in with this. The bottom line is they're gonna have to drop coverage to stop this. If they want to sit and 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 just do this, this is pretty simple. And for the most part, you can kind of rely on that. And again, the low ball works. You just want to make sure that you're throwing it in a lane that it's not at risk for getting intercepted. Okay. And if you want to simply just say, I'm going to max protect this and, 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 and run it kind of like, you know, again, like this, that's fine. It's real simple because if they go to the wheel, now the whole middle of the field's open for your, for your uh, dig, you know, you could literally just come out if you wanted a more quick snap play type thing and then they're and they're sending heavy pressure just out route this guy snap it and then boom and you see it's wide open so that is um the the pa shot wheel play against max coverage off of a pressure and also pressure so you can kind of understand how good this is the biggest thing that i want you to see is these wheels vert hook can't play them so if I'm in Tampa 2, and let's say I got a vert hook to the left, that vert hook can't play. It does. I'm going to shade down. So I have a hard flat and a vert hook. It doesn't matter because of where the wheel breaks, because the wheel is going outside um, of the of the player. Now, what I will say, one last thing here, and then we'll take off, is let's say they do that, and let's say they cross man onto it. So they give you like something like this. Okay, hypothetical. Um, what you're gonna see with this is you can still lowball this, but you see how it's in the see that lane right there. So that's where it can be a little bit problematic if they have vert hooks. Is the vert hook can kind of make it so that the window that you can throw this route is is not as easy. Um, especially, let's say this is probably the best coverage. You got shaded down vert hooks, you got hard flats, um, and then you have a man coverage on this guy, right? So you can kind of throw it right in there, but if you low ball, see that? And that's where I'm saying like, 
if there's a defender there in that throwing lane, be careful with your low ball, uh, please. Because if you're not careful with it, then you will get intercepted. So this route requires a lot of work. It requires practice and timing, um, but it's really good. And again, the more you lab the work, um, the more you put the time in to learn how to throw this route, the better equipped you're gonna be for when they send pressure at you. Thanks for watching the video. If you want way more in-depth eBooks and stuff like that than what I went into in this video, grab our Patreon. Everything has been thought through to a T. We got a lot of really, really good offenses and defenses in there for you. Trip Start In is my favorite. There's a lot of other good concepts in there. So if you want to check it out, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later.